Inside the box, you will receive the following components. One battery. Fitting components. One battery charger. One torque plate. One hub puller. Twist grip gear selectors. One ECU bag. Tire apps and wire tidier and fitting instructions. One wheel with hub motor included three wheel already fitted. Inside the box you will receive the following components. Two brake levers, one thumb throttle, two hand grips, one ECU, two components for the pedal elect, and a display. Inside your battery you box you will receive one battery with two unique keys. To remove the battery slider, turn the key to unlock and slide the battery back. You've got one component now to fit on your frame and obviously the battery is separate. On the battery you have a switch to turn the battery on and off which lights up blue and on the other side of the battery you've got a battery indicator, you've also got a USB port as well for charging your telephone if required. Along with the battery, you'll receive a battery charger, complete with a UK plug and the lead to plug into the battery to charge, which, which goes next to the USB port. Also including the kit was a torque plate which is made up of various components. We will cover this later on in the video but this is a very important part. We also supply a crank puller to pull off the crank on 90% of bikes. We will explain this further on the videos as well. Okay, to fit your rear wheel hub, um, obviously you would have swapped your tyre off, taking care to get the, the direction of rotation correct from your old bike and your inner tube onto the new hub. In the kit, you need to put one washer each side, as follows. It's also quite a good idea to cut the uh, tyre wrap off the spoke and just leave this wire on from the present moment. The next stage is to offer up the wheel to your forks to see if it fits in. And we, opposite, we do this the opposite way around because it's easy just to slide it in. This needs to be a nice snug fit in your forks. It's a good idea to offer it up to the forks the opposite way around. It should slide in and be a nice fit. If it's too tight, you may need to take a file and just dress the edges carefully to make the component fit slide in. If your bike has got rear disc brakes, you need to remove the, the uh, Allen key screws around here, remove the spacer plate, which is a dummy plate, and then screw your disc on. Please be careful to make sure that you use these screws, as long as screws can catch inside the hub. Once you've offered the wheel into the frame, Make sure the axle is tight up against the end of the forks. 
also ensure that the wire is going downwards to stop water ingress. The next stage is to fit the all important torque plate. This torque plate will stop spin out of the hub. You must fit this component otherwise you may null the warranty. To fit the component slide it up the wire and offer it up to the frame. If your frame you can find a hole already there all you need to do is to bolt this to the frame. If you can't find a, a hole, you if you do not wish to drill the frame, another way is using the longer pivot arm. You'll notice this pivot arm has got a slot in here. In the kit, there is a Jubilee clip which you can put around the frame. Or alternatively, you may be able to find another hole to put the arm into to save you drilling the frame. In the kit you will have some locate washers. On the right hand side of the bike you need to fit this washer facing down in the fork cutouts, as so. You will then have a 22mm nut, screw this nut on, making sure that the axle is right at the top of the fork. When you're happy that your wheel is central and right up you need to tighten both of these nuts. Sometimes you may find it better to drop the bike on the floor to put the pressure to push the hub up. As you can see on our bike, on the demonstration, we've actually drilled the frame and we've securely fit the torque plate. We've then put the nut on top and securely tightened this as well. Following the nut, you need to put the water retainer plastic dome on. Okay, in this part of the video, we're going to fit the pedal let, which is these two cones here. As you notice, we are fitting this on the left hand side of the bike, which is easier to fit. All you need to do is to remove your bung, you need to undo your crank, you then need to come back to the special tool which I spoke about earlier to actually pull this crank off. So you screw the black piece in. This needs to go all the way home. Make sure it's fairly tight. You then need to screw in the silver bit, which is the pull apart. Sometimes it can be a little stiff. This pulls your head in. You can then unscrew the tool. First component of it is on the sensor. Okay, on this bike, we're going to mount this behind this C bolt. When removing this, I've already loosened it with a C spanner, make sure that the inner bearing does not turn. So, all I'm going to do is unscrew this component, place the sensor in like so. and then put back the outer ring. Screw home the ring, again making sure that bearing hasn't turned. Just going to do this hand tight, but you can tighten it with a C spanner, which is probably best. You then need to fit the magnetics around. This must be fitted with the shiny side out. The magnet space in here. Push this firmly home, closing up that this air gap. Okay. 
You may find for some cranks, you may need to put a washer behind here to sort of hold this in tight. Okay. On some bikes, you may also need to take a small piece off the back of the crank to get this to fit. This can be gently filed off, or if you have the luxury of a miller machine, mill a small piece off to get it to fit. Also, on some bicycles, you may not be able to remove this C part, so it's quite acceptable to remove the sensor, which is only one screw in the back, from the plate. Now you can actually glue the sensor to the frame. We use a two pack solution on some bikes to do this. The important part is that you actually mount the sensor somewhere on the frame where the magnets will be able to pass. The pedal elect is now complete. As you can see, we've got the sensor mounted. We've also got the magnetic disc mounted. Very important is the air gap in between these two. It needs to be between two to three millimeters. If you have the air gap too wide, the pedal elect will not work, or it may work randomly, i.e. when you ride the bike, the power will come and go. You either need to bend the bracket in to give the air gap tight, well, on this bike, we've also fitted a washer behind the crank to keep that nice and secure. OK, we're going to mount the battery on the down tube, where normally the bottle is mounted. Remove the two bolts, if they're fitted. Offer up the plates to where the bolts would go. Secure the plate with the Allen keys. <coughs> 